towards people, like bring the group like dynamics down. She just brings like a bit of a negative like aroma, like you know, hmm, you know, like oh, everything's like every day's a drag kind of thing. I, I just don't like it. Please, could you give the name of your second nomination? Rachel. In the morning time or late of an evening time, she's really loud in the bedroom. I know she's excited because she's only been here for a week, but it's like, you know, I just think, like, just, like, whisper a bit and stuff, and it's not that it's not been brought up because it has been brought up. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to say, like, Rachel. Well, my first nomination this week is going to be Kiva. I think we're probably as close now as we're ever going to be, and yet even though... I feel really close to her and I'm having fun at times being around her. I'm a little bit concerned. Um, there was an incident this week where we were going to see how many Big Brother people we could fit in the bathtub. And then uh, Kiva comes walking in uh, with a, with just a shirt on with the buttons undone. And she was like a little bit exposed. And as soon as I saw her coming in, I jumped out of the bath, you know, because obviously I didn't want to be seen in any compromising sort of position. You know, at times what she considers to be fun can actually be quite destructive fun rather than what I would consider to be edifying, encouraging fun um, and innocent fun. I think my second nomination will be Keely. I think from the time Keely came in, there's uh, a strong um, element of, of competition and which I think at times could border on control and manipulation. I just think the longer Keely's year, I think that side of her personality will come out more and more. And I think probably over time she would try and sort of usurp an authority which she hasn't been given. But the reality of it is, you know, it's like we're all equal in here. First, I'm going to nominate um, Keely. Mainly just um, first, in first impression stick. And, um, and when she first came into the house, um, she hadn't even been in here 30 seconds and she came in and told us that we needed to tidy up the house, um, that I need to smile more <laughs> and that Benny needed a haircut and um, and since then she's sort of um, just been a bit bossy around the house and um, for someone who's just a five minute wonder she's come in here and she's um, thinks that she's um, queen of the house comes in here and sticks her two cents in she can take her two cents Shine it up real nice, turn it sideways and stick it straight up her ass as far as I'm concerned. For the second nomination I'm gonna have to go I'm gonna have to go with Corin because she sings too loud. <laughs> At the times like um when people are sleeping or whatever or um if people are um or if you can see that there's um someone's having a rough time, um it's not always um, good to have someone singing at the top of their lungs. Sometimes it's comforting, sometimes it's not. The first nomination is gonna be Kiva. There's loads of so many reasons. <laughs> I feel a bit let, let down with the whole um, situation with um, John James and all that. She's so negative about everything. It's constantly having a bitch about someone or can't stand someone. And and I think Kiva's sense of humour is quite funny. She thinks it's funny to be a bit of a cow. Like when you tell your mate that you know, you've got feelings for somebody and you really like them, you don't expect them then to... Do you know what I mean? Be jumping on them with hardly anything on and offering your bed to them. JC, please could you give the name of your second nomination? Oh, I, oh yeah, yeah. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I walked in the kitchen one more, one morning. And then it, he goes to me and I said, oh God, I feel, I'm having a bad day. You know, I feel really big today and all that. And he went, my wife's a size 14. She don't look fat. He said, why don't you get down to, <laughs> why don't you get down to a size 14? What are you, an 18? And I and I just I did, and and after I told him I was having a really shit day, like a really rubbish day, he went and bloody said that. Made me feel like I was even having a worse day than I already was. Uh, first nomination is Kiva. I don't know whether she does it intentionally or not, but she's quite ignorant. Um, the other night when Ben was trying to get some sleep, he literally got up and was like telling her, "Please, can I get some sleep?" And his reasons. She just laughed in his face, and I just think that's really ignorant. And then also when she was jumping around with her boobs out the other night, she didn't take Dave into consideration. I just thought that was quite ignorant as well. So it just makes me a bit wary. My second nomination is John James. 
he's just Mr. Dramatic with absolutely everything. No need to be like that. It's like a dog with a bone, he just don't give up and I just think it's just Mr. Dramatic all the time. He just needs to chill out. Not chill out, just lighten up. Uh, okay, my first nomination is going to be Josie. This whole scenario between herself, John and Kiva, I think I thought it was kind of like a joke at first, but now Josie's like, I can tell she go, she's going out of a way to avoid Kiva, and I just think, sit down and be friends again, you know, because the awkwardness is over a perceived flirting and jealousy that doesn't really exist on anybody's part in that. My second nomination is, again, going to be Kiva. I feel Kiva is, not, is also avoiding Josie now and not putting in the effort to sort of re-patch their friendship. You should never fall out over a boy. So they're being, they're being awkward around each other for nothing. My first nomination, someone that I did love, but I don't love anymore, and it's Ben. Because um, of the bed situation, because I said swap beds, because he doesn't like sleeping by the door. But I did say to him, yeah, it might not be a permanent thing. And he was like, oh, no, you can have it back, just try it out. And then he didn't even, like, he, has, he hasn't really even offered to give me my bed back. And he's not been a very much of a good gentleman and saying, oh, do you want your bed back? And this morning I had such a headache. And he didn't even say, oh, why have you got a headache? And you know why he didn't say that? Because he knew I would have said, because of your bed. And then he would have felt like, you know. So it's, that's my first nomination. My second nomination is for Kiva. She's a very flirty person, which is always good in my books, but it's not good if you're flirting with someone hurts someone else's feelings. I kind of thought it was a bit horrible when we all spoke to Josie about her feelings with John, and Josie backed off from John a little bit, but when she backed off, them two were like that. If that was me, I, I wouldn't like that. It's like a bit nasty, isn't it? My first nomination this week is going to be Kiva. She's uh, spending most of her time wandering around the house with her face like thunder. Um, always being quite negative. I just find it a bit of a put off to be honest. So for that reason, that is why I picked Kiva. Steve, please could you give the name of your second nomination? I'm going to have to put um, Rachel. She has this habit of walking in on conversations and sort of jumping in with her lad loud squealy voice and um, at night times running around acting a bit silly. It's the only time she says she could regress back to being sort of childlike behaviour but for me childlike behaviour is not really the way forward. You know, It's all good fun but at three, four in the morning it's not the kind of thing you want when some of the housemates are trying to get to sleep. Kiva received seven nominations. Rachel received three nominations. Andrew and Mario received no nominations. <laughs> 2 or 9 p.m. Some of the housemates are in the garden. You know when lads go on holiday, what are they like? I'm not like that. I'll have a laugh, but I'm not. I'm not like it's that. not. It's not men's fault though, because they've got this need, isn't it? If someone puts it in front, they're going to take it. That's it, yeah. It's all. It's, I think it's the women who shouldn't be doing it. If you know someone's got a fella. You shouldn't fucking go near them. I don't think I'm... Um, there's nothing wrong with a bit of armless fun. I think I could forgive someone more having a one-night stand than having a full-blown affair. What are you classing as harmless fun? <laughs> I don't really want to stipulate a list of what I think harmless fun is. <laughs> really don't. You get yourself into trouble, do yeah, you? Yeah, that means you again. know it must be wrong, then, if it's uh, harmless... If... A cheeky flirt, just a bit of fun. Yeah, well, flirting, there's nothing wrong with that. I Heavy do that on flirt. Dev and John James are in the nest talking about Keely. She's here to fucking win. And, yeah. no, and, and she won't give a fuck who she treads on to fucking win to get that. And I personally, I'm only making assumptions at the moment and I'm only yeah. assuming things, yeah. but as time goes on, if I am still here, and if she does make that clear, yeah. there'll be fucking wars. <laughs> <laughs> I believe she's using Stevo. Yeah. Yeah. To her advantage. I think so as well. I, I truly believe that. I think so. I don't think it would have mattered. Steve-O is a good bloke and I, I love Steve-O, personally. But did you see well, what she I, did? I look, I look up to him. But I love that. In, first thing she did, obviously Josie and Steve-O are the favourites, yeah. She comes in, yeah, straight away wants to take over Steve-O's place as the Baron, right? And says to Josie, you got to up your game now, I'm here. 